All right. Hello, everybody. This is John Meadows and Evan Centipani. Um, we're going to talk about the training we did today. We did some leg training. And right now, Evan is in his off season, and I am uh, in kind of pre contest phase. And um, what we did today was the first thing we did was we started off with a leg curl. I think those of you that are familiar with me know that I have a preference for starting leg workouts with variations of leg curls and today we just used the lying leg curl um, we started off with some straight sets and basically we just worked up to um, a drop set at the end and you know, you'll see we do a couple drops in the video and then we also tacked on some partials we try to get 20 reps out uh, after the partials and then we threw in an isotension rep too for good measure and um, <clears throat> it was a pretty intense pump. I'm pretty used to it. Um, I don't know if Evan, if if you're used to doing the four straps or isotension, but you know, what do you think about those leg curls? The isotension, static holds, things like that was definitely something uh, different for me. Uh, four straps, I'm definitely accustomed to. Um, you know, by the time we were done warming up the hamstrings. I was, you know, I had a pretty solid pump in the last set where, uh, you know, we kind of pulled out all the stops and whipped out some of the, some of the other stuff, <laughs> you know, so I got off, I got, you know, got up off the machine thinking to myself, wow, okay, all right, you know, we're getting, we're getting going now, so if this is a forecast of what's to come, I think it's going to be a good one. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times we'll do, we do a lot of warm-up sets, especially Dave and I, because we're old as, old as dust, and, uh. I think people initially are like, man, is this all we're doing? Just all these warm-up sets? Like, no, there's some fun to follow. So then we then we moved on to um, a version of a Bulgarian squat that I really like. Um, <clears throat> I've never been a big fan of Bulgarian squats from the perspective of balance. Uh, it's when you have a leg elevated, a foot elevated, and you know there's a balance component to it. And even if you hold both dumbbells, it's I find it really easy to lose your balance. But Doing it the way you'll see in the video, I absolutely love. I think these are absolutely awesome uh, in terms of uh, both really quad and glute work predominantly. Um, but you'll see that we're using a dumbbell on one hand, but we're actually using uh, the squat rack to balance ourselves. So you take the balance, you take the balance uh, problem out of the out of the exercise. And you can really focus on getting your reps, focusing on your form, and most importantly, focusing on intensity. Because um, really, that's the main thing we're trying to do. We're trying to generate intensity, not worrying about falling over because our, you know, due to a balance issue. So we did some sets uh, working up in weight with, uh, I think we did a 25 pound dumbbell, then I want to say a 45 and a 65, and then you'll see another drop set. Um, the, the drop set, uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do sets of 10. And at the end of every set of 10, we're trying to do a 10 second ISO hold and then drop the weight. Um, that's my goal when I do these. I have yet to do all 10 reps with a 10 second ISO hold. And that's, that's my goal though. <laughs> I'm going to keep trying it and I want to keep doing it until I can do that. Um, but I, I, there's really no way for me to put into words how um how those felt maybe you can put it into words <laughs> i gotta say this 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 for me was the was the surprise of the workout this was the winner um and, and unfortunately i think you know for most of you who who are watching this i don't think you're gonna quite i don't know that if you're gonna be able to quite see you know <laughs> well, obviously you can't see what it feels like but i'll tell you right now it, it um it felt way crazier than than probably what it what it looks like you know it doesn't you know geez i mean i see uh you know girls at my gym doing something similar to this it looks like you know you know okay uh you know it's like a lunge exercise i'll put my foot up on the bench but uh i mean the way the way that this was executed wow um this blew my mind because the the feeling okay you know you get a you know okay your first warm up set oh wow you know good 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 pump in, in my quads and yeah yeah i feel it in my glutes and then the sets go on and it's whoa 
um, <laughs> it's like you, you almost lose all feeling in, in your in your quads, and it's just the feeling that you get in your glutes. It's just uh, it's un, it's unlike anything. Because I mean, you know, I've I've I squat heavy. I've squatted heavy, you know, in the past. You know, you get on a leg press, but I mean, this was just really really different, and it, it induced a feeling. Um, <sighs> I, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just like a deep kind of muscular, you know, muscular failure. Like you're just, you're just going to lose it. And uh, maybe the most valuable part of it was kind of reinforcing the idea that you can using, you know, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't have to always go in the gym, you know, and throw 500 pounds on my back um, and squat it to uh to get a hell of a workout you know and, and, and truth be told and this was something that john and i were talking about you, you feel like at some point doing that week after week after week at some t- at some point it doesn't seem sustainable so this this was uh for me really inspiring um and really refreshing to kind of see okay wow all right so this is how i can utilize something different that um you know maybe in a way i can i can do things a little safer and practice some, you know, self-preservation, but still have it be highly, highly effective. John, do you have a class on the right now? Um, <coughs> I got, um... You have some mine. What's that? You have some mine. <laughs> From there, we went on to um, my favorite uh, squatting apparatus or squat bar. It's called a spider bar, and it's a combination of a cambered bar and uh, a safety squat bar. So, you uh, by the camber forces you to really stay upright and focus on your balance. Uh, and then the safety squat part that sits on your shoulders will, um, that also, you know, you gotta be pretty upright or it'll fold you over like a chair. So, you know, doing that after the previous exercise, um, I really like, and I, and I'll tell you why, because you feel it nowhere except in the muscle. Um, and I've been battling kind of some <clears throat> aches and pains this year and it's really frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating if you get into an exercise, uh, especially a squat. You know, that's my absolute favorite exercise. But to not be able to really grind because of, you know, aches and pains. So um, you can, uh, you know, you can use uh, another exercise like we did today as a prelude to, to these squats. And, you know, really what we did was we had a rep number in mind and we just kept going up until we felt like, okay, that's probably, you know, we're losing our balance, we're losing our form. And, you know, so there it's, I wouldn't call it light. We're still going as heavy as we can go for our rep count. We're just not going to get stupid. And, you know, my, there was a certain point where my legs just started shaking and my body was, I took that as a signal to, okay, you've probably had enough. I got to be honest with you, walking away from the, the, the Bulgarian squats, my legs were just feeling like, whoa. Um, <laughs> and then uh, as, as these guys were, you know, warming up, um, I think after the, my first warm-up set with, uh, with, the, with the squats, I said, oh, man, I, I'm, I'm getting that feeling. <laughs> and I was so, so bummed out because, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't, you know, I, I generally train pretty hard, but this was just something different, you know. It just it was, it was not something I was used to. It was just a different feeling, a different stimulus. And I was so disappointed that I, uh, that I ended up uh, blowing chunks. But <laughs> because, honestly, like, like John said, putting squats at, at this point in the workout you're, you're, you're typically able to squat pain free, you know, and really get a lot out of it and have it be highly effective, even though, you know, okay, the weight is, uh, is reduced. So the movement itself felt fantastic. Just, uh, at this point, my brain was a little bit, uh, in a different place. Um, it it took me a little, a little while to, to regain myself. So I, I wish, I wish for that reason, um, I felt, you know, I, I didn't, uh, 
I didn't lose it, and I uh, could have put a little bit more into the squats because it, it felt great, and it's a it is a great movement. Um, I never use the bar exact. We have a safety squat bar, but it doesn't have that that drastic camber like like this one has, and it's a great movement, especially you know it kind of reminds you. All right, if you've been squatting for a while, you know using a straight bar. You know, this was something John was, was talking about earlier uh, in the day we were kind of having a conversation. Just, you know, we are kind of creatures of habit and you fall into doing things the week after week after week. And the body does adapt pretty quickly. <laughs> the changing up the bar you're using, the angle you're using, stance, blah, 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 is beneficial. And, you know, again, something that the workout reminded me to do is, okay, change some stuff. <laughs> From there, we moved on to hack squats, just uh, good old basic rock bottom hack squats, and um, we we used the same kind of style that we used on the spider bar squats. We had a rep count in mind, and we basically just kept going up, up and up. I, I think we got to maybe six plates, um, and uh, you know, again, once you start feeling your form and my legs, you know, I got the same signal that I got on the squats. My legs started shaking and feeling unstable. It's like, okay, this is probably probably time to back it down. When uh, when John and Dave were like, all right, we're going to, you know, do some hack squats now, I kind of like to myself, I said, because uh, I don't usually do a lot of hacks because usually they wreck my knees. Um, and I got to say that between the mach- this this machine itself the way it was built with a big giant pat, uh, platform on it and um and the fact that you know there were a couple bands attached that you know took a little bit of pressure off that that bottom where you're coming out of the hole where you know your your knees seem to generally be at the point of like you know greatest tension oh man what a difference it made because you know the 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 weight was getting you know uh, progressively there was progressively more resistance as you um went through the movement um, and it, was, it, it makes a big difference because you're able to shift, you're able to feel much, uh, like much greater tension higher up in the quads, you know, like higher up on your, on your quads. And, you know, for me, more inner thighs and kind of take the knees out of it. And I was really, really impressed. And, uh, it, the movement felt great. And by, and by this time in the work, I was, luckily I was feeling a little bit better too. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of got our second win there. Um, we, we only did one set of leg extensions after that. And I'm, I'm trying to remember if I, you know, a lot of times when I do leg extensions, um, I like to dorsiflex my foot. And I feel like you feel a lot more tension in your rectus femoris and kind of in your upper thigh. And Evan and I were talking about that. That's an area that he wants to focus on too. So um, we just did a set there, but we were kind of tinkering around with foot position and Evan mentioned that if he plantar flexes his foot, you know, for a teardrop, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. But doing it the opposite way felt okay. So um, that's a variation you guys can try if you want to little, get a little bit more upper thigh. Dorsiflex your foot, and uh, you'll, feel, you'll feel it. You'll feel the contraction. Um, and, and the opposite is true. If you plantar flex your foot, you'll feel your teardrop and your lower quad. So just one set there. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because just, you know, a little variation like that. You know, John said, no, you know, uh, curl your toes up a little bit more. I said, okay. And I said, whoa. You know, you feel the uh, the emphasis, you know, shift kind of more from, you know, lower on the quads, your te- teardrop area to, you know, higher up. And for me, I've always had kind of a thicker teardrop and just could always use more meat, you know, in the, in the upper part. So it was definitely a valuable. Uh, it, was, it was worth doing. From there, we went to a powerlifting uh, staple, uh, glute ham raises. I, this isn't my best exercise. I really, I've, I've always been real weak at these. Uh, that probably means I should do more of them. But uh, we did three sets on the glute ham raise. You'll notice we weren't doing a lot of reps. That's because I'm not physically capable of doing a lot of reps on that exercise. Um, our, our form is probably not perfect, but uh, we were trying. Um, that is a very, very difficult exercise to execute properly, especially if you don't really do it often. And I don't typically do it very often. But, um, man, those felt great too. Uh, and that's that's pretty much how we finished off. So, you know, overall, um, this is I, I would call this a pretty average workout for us. 
uh, very good. I was very happy with it. Um, in terms of volume, you know, the volume discussions are always kind of weird, I think, because people count sets differently. You know, we had some sets that were really, really high, you know, what I would call high, high, highly intense sets. But we also had a lot of sets kind of leading up to those. Some people don't count those, and they would call that a low-volume workout. Some people would count all the sets working up to it and call it a high-volume workout. So in my opinion is, is who cares? At the end of the day, you got to, you know, <clears throat> train with a lot of intensity and break down the muscle. And we were, again, you know, uh, we talked about our legs shaking. We were, we were listening to our body signals that when it, was, when it had had enough, we moved on. And we listened. So, you know, I think it was a good, smart workout, intelligent workout where we were able to train hard and, and also live to fight another day. I think the workout was really well designed. I think that, you know, you, you and anybody can construct a workout that's highly intense. You say, okay, well, here, let's go over to the squat bar. Let's load it up with weight and let's just bang out as many sets as we can and force reps and things like that. And that's great. But you can't do that, I think, all the time. And, you know, a workout like this was, uh, I mean, you can always do more, I guess. You could always do another set. You could stay in the gym for another hour. You could stay in the gym for another two hours. Um, but I guess the question is, will it be more effective? Will it be beneficial? Or will it actually be to your detriment? And like John said, um, there's a, you know, you, you kind of have to recognize the point, <laughs> you know, when you're ready to move on. And that, okay, we went, you know, we went all in. Uh, I mean, maybe you can do one, you know, you can do one set and get so much out of it that you don't need to do another one. Um, I, I guess I would prefer to think that the, the one thing, if you're looking, the more desirable thing would to be to get the most out of doing the least. Um, and I think, I think this workout was a really, really good bang for the buck. Um, it was intense, but it wasn't the type where I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and go, oh man, my knees <laughs> or my back or, you know, it's, it's, it's going to, it's going to be effective. But next week, if I'm going to go and I'm going to squat heavy, I expect to be stronger. Not like, oh man, that workout took, you know, banged me up so bad last week that I'm actually weaker this week. And you know, that's not what I want. So sometimes it's a game of, um, you know, knowing what's enough and what's too much and you got to go hard enough. But I don't know. It's all a balance, I guess. And in that, in that regard, I thought the workout was fantastic. 